Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is The Clumsy Simmer and today I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to build this house using only the base game here in The Sims 4. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay everyone, the first thing we need to do before we get started is to control shift C and type in bb.move objects and enter. Now move objects is on and that's very important so it makes the building process way easier. We'll be able to blend landscaping easier, make clutter pieces on the inside easier and it's just an overall very very useful tool. And then press escape to escape out of the little cheat console and now let's go ahead and get started building. So the first thing is to grab this room tool and click anywhere on the lot. It really doesn't matter where, we can always adjust it and click it out, drag it out seven times and back several times. I don't typically count that. Um, we can always adjust it in the future. And also you want to make sure that our walls are on the short wall height and not the medium or the tall wall height. The reason being is because the short wall height is just easier for beginners when doing the medium or even the tall wall height we have a lot more area to cover and it, it's just a lot harder to make the build look good so let's go ahead and go back to this short wall height now we are going to grab this room go ahead and copy it and then go upstairs and place it directly on top this will be our second story i like to give my builds a little bit of a front porch so let's go ahead and grab this flat square right here and plop it down all the way to the right and grab this arrow and drag it all the way to the left side of the build. You can also adjust the size of the porch, but for this tutorial, we are going to leave it three squares wide. Now, I want to give this a ceiling, but instead of clicking build ceiling right here, let's go ahead and just copy that and paste it directly on top. Now this gives us the ceiling that we need without costing extra simoleons and now we will be able to grab a exterior trim. So let's grab this jutting exterior trim and plop it on every part of the top story. Now as you can see it's a little boring here in the front so let's go ahead and grab our room tool again and all the way on the right side go ahead and click that bring it out one time and over four times. This gives us a little bit more detail on the top story, but I also want to do the same thing underneath. So let's go ahead and do that now. Don't forget to add the exterior trim on the piece we just added. Now, this side over here is very bland, so let's go ahead and grab the room tool again and go in two tiles and then click down, drag it out three times and over all the way until you barely reach the end. Now for the back, let's go ahead and go all the way to the right corner over here, drag it out three times now and over four times. And for the top layer, instead of going out three times, let's go ahead and just go out two times and over four times. This will make sense when we go to do the roofing. I also wanna do a back porch over here. So let's go ahead and grab this flat square and plop it down right here in the corner and grab the arrow and bring it in so it's only two tiles wide. Let's go ahead and copy our exterior wall trim and put it down right here on the top layer as well. As you can see, it's not going on this piece right here. So what we can do to fix that is grab this flat square and place it on top. And then drag it so it fits the top part of the wall perfectly. Now let's just grab the eyedropper tool, copy it, and paste it right on top. I like to put chimneys in my build, so let's go ahead and go to the side right here. And it really doesn't matter where, we can always adjust it, but so for the tutorial's sake, we are five slots over, and let's go ahead and drag it out one time and over two times. Now let's go ahead and do the same for the top story, and the same for a third time. Um, and we will be putting another layer on top of this once we do the roofing. Now, I like my houses to be on a little bit of a foundation, so go ahead and click anywhere on the build, and you see this top and bottom arrow right here? Go ahead and click that, drag it up three times, and now our build is up on a foundation three times, and now we'll have that three staircase step exactly how we like it. All right, now that we have our exterior walls built, it's time for everybody's favorite part. <laughs> and that is to do roofing. Um, roofing really is not as bad as a lot of people make it seem. It's actually quite fun, and once you get the hang of it, it's quite easy, at least for very simple roofing. I'm by 
no means an expert roofer at all. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start out with this gabled roof right here and plop it down all the way over on the right side of the build and drag it over one time so that it's exactly even with this front part right here. And now let's go ahead and grab this by copying it and use your period key or the right arrow key and turn it over one time and make sure the green part lines up with the corner of the build and plop it down and then grab the arrow on the right side and drag it all the way over to the right side of the build. Now let's go ahead and turn our screen and grab the back arrow and drag it all the way to the end of our build. As you can see, it's a little large. So what I'm going to do is drag all of the back over here one tile in. So let's go ahead and do that now. We are one tile in and it's a little bit shorter, just how I like it. And I also want to drag this down two times. Now that roof is a little bit less tall but I'm going to keep this front piece exactly how it is. The only thing I'm going to do with this front piece is to grab this back arrow and drag it all the way to the first corner. What we are trying to do is get rid of this piece right here that's just sticking out. So now you see this small arrow right here, not the big one, but the small one. Go ahead and grab that and press shift and bring it back. What this does is move the back side right here while not moving the front side. So when I'm not pressing shift, now you can see it's moving both sides. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and press shift, move it back. And now as you can see, it's a little blended better now. So let's go ahead and copy that piece, paste it directly behind that front piece and drag it in to blend in with the roof. And then the side arrow right here, don't press shift, just leave it be and go ahead and drag that in to hide the sides right here. Now let's go ahead and grab this big tall roof piece right here, copy that and paste it right here at the bottom and drag the back to center with the side of the wall. Do not touch the height here. A good rule of thumb is to make sure both of these is the exact same height because it will always look good if it's the exact same height. You see how funky it looks if this is tall and that's short? We don't want that. So let's go ahead and just make it the same height. As you can see, this roof piece is interfering with our walls on the inside. So let's go ahead and grab that right arrow and bring it back until you meet the side of the wall and the same trick I showed you just a second ago hold shift down click this tiny arrow and drag it in and now we don't have any walls interfering with the inside now I want to grab this front piece right here and copy that and turn it over twice using either the comma key or the period key it doesn't matter just do it two times and plop it down and go to the side click the arrow and move it just one plot over and then copy that Paste it right behind the first one and click this little arrow right here so we can put the sides blended in the roof. And it's not blended quite, so let's go ahead and fix that and take it all the way over. And now it's perfectly blended. So it looks like I forgot to build a ceiling up here, so let's go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and copy the back porch and plop it right on top of the porch to build a ceiling and then grab the eyedropper tool and copy the exterior trim so you can add the exterior trim to the roof of our porch. You can also make this a balcony if you want, but for tutorial purposes, we are just going to make it an additional roof. So let's go back to roofs and let's grab the half gabled roof this time and let's go ahead and put it over the balcony piece first. So go ahead and press the arrow key and that will turn it one time and plop it down and and it's a little tall so I like to make this pretty short so let's go ahead and make it not as short as possible but one above being as short as possible and I want to blend it in this roof over here so grab the back arrow and pull it forward to blend it in now let's go ahead and grab this same roof copy that and paste it right over this part that's blank right here and we want this to blend in with the chimney so go ahead and grab that and shift it all the way over until it blends in. As you can see, this gives us a little bit more detail on the roof, and I quite like that rather than just doing a straight line forward. I think this way looks a lot better. We still need to do the front roof, so go ahead and grab one of these two pieces right here, probably the shorter one right here, copy that. Let's go to the front, let's turn it twice, and paste it down. And now grab the arrow, and bring it all the way over to the edge of the wall. Let's make sure it's blended in nicely on both sides. So go ahead and grab the left arrow right here and drag it all the way over until it blends in with the chimney. 
and then turn to the other side and make sure it's blended in over here as well. Let's go ahead and finish the chimney back here. As you can tell, it's not quite even. So instead of doing a two chimney, let's go ahead and just do a one tile chimney and that will line it up with this corner piece perfectly. And that's how I prefer to make my chimneys. Now, since we fixed the chimney, our roof is sticking out and not blended. So just drag that over one more time to make it blended. Now let's go to the half wall section and grab for starters, let's go ahead and grab the one decimal short wall or it's four tiles up but it's like it has the one up there in the corner you see the 1.0 so go ahead and grab that and grab the, the room tool and drag it over to make a square as you can tell it's not tall enough at all now let's go ahead and grab the 2.0 medium half wall um, and then go over and make sure the replace half walls is selected so it makes it easier to replace them all at once hold down shift and click and now they're all there and I I would say that's a pretty perfect height. Let's go ahead and paint the trim on the chimney while we're thinking about it. So go to wall trims, click any of them. For this one, we're going to do the basic wood trim and we're going to do it in white and plop that down. Let's go ahead and paint our exterior walls now. So let's go to the paneling or the siding and let's click this one right here. It's Schoolie's office. And let's choose this blue and brick one right here. And it also has the columns on the side I want that there so let's go ahead and click that and hold down shift and put it on the whole bottom layer only besides the chimney and just go around making sure it's all on there and now let's go ahead and do the top layer so let's go ahead and grab this simple siding right here the blue one and go ahead and put it on the entire top layer including the ceilings but skipping over the chimney now let's go ahead and paint the chimney so go over to the masonry and go over to the brickery right here and click Click the middle swatch. I found that this is the one that matches the bottom brick here the most. There isn't one that matches it evenly, at least not that I could find. So let's go ahead and just grab this one. It matches it the most and paint the entire chimney. I also like to paint the inside of the top right here. I also like to make sure I paint the foundation. So go to the foundations and click this better than bricks foundation and go ahead and click it on every single room on the bottom layer. Okay, now that we're done painting the exterior walls, let's go ahead and paint the roof. So go to roof patterns and go over to wouldn't you wonder composite roof and click the black swatch. And now let's go ahead and paint all of the roofs. Now let's go ahead and do roof trim. So go to roof trims and go all the way over until you see beveled out roof trim. Click that and click the ultra white version. There's like a white version and there's an ultra white version. We want the ultra white and go ahead and paint every single trim on every single roof piece. So I'm looking at the side of the house over here and I don't quite like the way that the wall trim looks right here. Sometimes it can look really good, but in this instance it doesn't. So let's go ahead and delete that. The reason it doesn't look good I'm thinking is because we already have this roof piece right here. So we're just going to delete that wall trim and now it looks a lot better in my opinion. I'm also going to delete this little piece right here but I am going to leave the wall trim over the porch in the front and the back as well now let's go ahead and add some columns so go over to columns and let's grab this Andley square column and just the regular white and let's go ahead and plop it on each corner as well as the middle right here and as you can see our paneling does not have the white trim on this side for some reason so let's go ahead and just grab this Andley square column and let's add it to every single piece on the top floor. Okay, now that we have the columns, um, we don't need to do the bottom floor because this schoolie's office paneling slash brick is really good about putting columns on every single tile, even the single tile wide. Uh, for some reason, this regular paneling at the top does not do that for the single wide. It has to be too wide. And I don't quite like that. I wish they would update that. Let's go ahead and go back to the siding real quick and grab the simple siding without the column and do the same blue color and let's just go ahead and paste this on the whole top layer. All right, now that we have our columns, let's go ahead and grab our front door. So go to the doors, go all the way down until you see this arch door with the double panes. That is by far my favorite base game door. So let's go ahead and grab that and plop it right here. And let's grab this octopane window right here and over the front door, go ahead and let's plop down two windows. And with the same octopane 
door. Let's go over to the side over here and just do one directly in the center. And now let's go ahead and grab this almost secure safety window and let's click the black swatch. And you see how it's not quite... I want it to be between both of these decimals right here. So let's go ahead and press the F5 key. And now as you can see, it gives us an extra space we can go. So let's go ahead and plop two down. And I like to grab this and hold down Alt key. So without Alt key, it's a very strict area that you can put it but with alt key you have free range so with it being in its first place let's go ahead and grab the alt key and very carefully shift it over about three times now you can barely see some wallpaper beside this trim and that's how we want it and let's do the same for this side you also want to make sure it's the same height now let's do the exact same thing on the bottom story and then grab it and put it over a couple times two to three times i did three at the top so we'll do three at the bottom now now let's just take a second and look at our build and see if there's anything you want to change on it. Um, we did pretty good about changing it as we went so let's go ahead and move forward. Now that we have the windows in the front let's go ahead and add it to the back as well. Pretty much exactly where we put it in the front we'll do the same thing in the back. We also want to add a back door so let's go ahead and grab this sliding door right here the cha-cha sliding door and pop it down right here in the back wall. I also need to add a column on the porch right here so go ahead and grab the eyedrop tool up here and click the column and paste it down in the corner of the porch right here. All right now that we have all of our windows and all of our doors let's go ahead and grab this stairs right here and choose any stairs you want. My favorite stair is this townhouse stairway. I love this light wood with the white. So let's grab that. Let's turn it over two times and plop it down in the corner and drag it over a couple times to be exactly three tiles wide, just like the wall where the door is on. And let's copy this and paste it directly in the back. So I like to make sure um, if I have a brick foundation, I like to make sure that the stairway is also brick. So let's go ahead and grab the brick right here and paste it on each of the stairs. And now, as you can see, it blends in perfectly. All right, let's go ahead and add some fencing to our porches. So go over until you see this fancy picket fence. This is by far my favorite fence in the base game. And let's just do the replace fencing tool and then put it down, but don't don't click it yet. Go ahead and hold down shift. What this does is add fencing on every single exterior wall on the porch. So we put that down and do the same in the back. And let's go ahead and go to the spandrels and click this basic spandrel or the budget spandrel right here in the front. And let's go ahead and add that. But before you click, do the same thing with the shift key. And now it's going to hit every single side and do the same for the back. I like my stairs to always have railing on the side. So let's go ahead and go to the railing section and go over until you see this elegant shoe rail with the rounded newels. Go ahead and grab that and paste it on the front staircase as well as the back staircase. I also want to paint the front and the back porch. So go ahead and go to the wood and let's go to this Limber Lumber Fashion Hardwoods and let's click the lightest wood swatch. And I don't like it to be vertical against the stairway like this. So let's go ahead and flip it one time and it get horizontal with the stairway and now that just looks so much better it looks like it actually blends in and do the same for the back as well so now that we have all of the exterior pretty much done let's go ahead and add some decorative pieces so go down here to the wall sculptures and let's go to decorative corbel and i want to plop it down but as you can see when i plop it down there's a little bit of a gap so what we're going to do is click it do not press it down yet go ahead and click control hold control down and click the nine button one time and that will move it up one space and you when you want to move it back down press the zero key and that will move it down okay now i want to add some neighborly window boxes under each of the windows so let's go ahead and grab this one and I want to keep this basic yellow swatch. I think that looks so good with this blue paneling. So while holding down Alt, 
and you can free place it. Let's go ahead and place it on each of the windows as evenly as you can. Okay guys, now that we have all of our planter boxes added, look how pretty our build is turning out. So um, let's go ahead and add some sidewalk down. So go over to the flooring and go over to the stone. And for this tutorial, I want to use the cushy concrete. So go ahead and click that. And let's go ahead and click and drag it until we make a sidewalk. I'm not gonna quite do the back yet, so let's go ahead and wait on that. So now that we have all of our decoration pieces, I want to build a backyard, and I love to do that using a privacy fence, but it's a little bit short over here. I want to move it over one time. So go ahead and click this quadruple arrow up here, the move house, and then click the move lot and click the move button and move it over just one time. And now that gives us a little bit more space. So let's go ahead and grab a simple fence, the lightest wood swat, and let's go ahead and place fencing by drawing it down ourselves. And we can't do it directly in the middle of this wall right here, but pretty close. So let's go ahead and so you don't want to click the wall because by doing that, it will give a little bit of a foundation on this fence and we don't want that. So go out and drag it to the wall. And now we can finish dragging the fence on the other side. And let's go ahead and do it to the whole exterior. But instead of going all the way over to the right side here, let's drag it in to meet the corner of our building. And now as you can see, we have a backyard, a perfectly shaped backyard with the house. You can build some more backyard over here, but for this tutorial, I want it even with this wall exterior right here. We can add a tree over here or something in that nature. Now that we have our fencing, I like to have a little bit of a gate but the base game really doesn't have any good gates so let's just delete two of these walls and this opening right here acts as like a little bit of a fake gate all right guys now that we have the exterior of our build completely built and we have the backyard and everything let's go ahead and get some landscaping done um this part you guys don't have to follow along if you don't want to but i just want to show you guys how i would landscape this property so let's go ahead and grab these big tall slender cypress trees right here and let's go ahead and plop one down in the corner right here and size it down using the left bracket key and place it directly in front of kind of to the side kind of in front of that other one and let's go ahead and add it on the left side as well we're just going to do one over here now let's go ahead and grab some bushes um these bushes i love they're my favorite but they're a little bit too long so let's go ahead and grab the high hedge which would be my second favorite and plop that down so a good rule of thumb is to have all of the bushes pretty much outline the entirety of the build. All right, now that we have bushes on that side, let's go ahead and do the same for this side over here. All right, something else I like to do is to choose a different type of tree. This hawthorn tree is a tree that I really like. And let's go ahead and plop it down in different areas of the build. So let's go ahead and do one directly in front of this fence right here. I really like how it kind of goes over the walkway right there. And the Sims will walk under it. And let's go ahead and plop another one right here and also one in the corner right here. But this one in the corner right here, um, let's go ahead and size it down using the left bracket key again. And let's go ahead and place it pretty much in the corner. Now let's go over to the flowers and grab this red flowers right here, but let's go to the yellow swatch so it matches the yellow planter boxes. And let's go ahead and find different areas we can put it. So right here, um, outlining these different trees in the front would be a good idea. So let's go ahead and plop a couple down. So I like to put one down and then size down another one using the bracket key and pl put it directly beside it. And you can copy it by holding down shift when you hold down. So go ahead and click and hold down shift and now it creates an exact copy. And go ahead and size down that other copy and put it to the side and do the same with this one right here and the same with this one in the back right here. We will focus on the back landscaping after we do the front. And I also like to grab in the bushes section, go ahead and grab this palm plant. And I like to add these around. So let's add one here and let's go ahead and shift these over a little bit to outline the palm plant and let's grab another palm plant and size it down and let's go ahead and put it in the front right here and so let's go ahead and put one behind the tree here and let's go ahead and size down another one and put it over here so let's go ahead and check out the side over here i kind of want to put some flowers right here so let's go ahead and copy the yellow flowers and let's go ahead and plop a couple down and i also want to add a palm plant as well 
I like to outline the flowers to make it look like it's a little bit overgrown. So let's grab these low-lying pale yellow flowers right here and hold down shift and alt so you can freely place it. And let's go ahead and place some right under these yellow flowers. And I also like to fill in the garden bed as well. So now the front is looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and add some landscaping in the back. So the first thing I want to do is go to the trees and grab one of these oak trees. And let's go ahead and plop it in the corner right here. And I also like to make sure it just makes sense underneath. And you can also kind of hold down shift and place it any direction. So let's go ahead and leave it like that. And I also want to copy this concrete in the front and let's build a pool back here. So let's go ahead and just build a little area where the pool will go. Now let's grab the pool tool and go ahead and just grab the regular one that you can drag over and go in the corner over here and let's just build a basic pool. I want to leave a little bit of a section right here though so we can place some chairs or a little dining table or anything like that. Let's go ahead and go to the outdoor water decor and this is where you'll find the pool objects. So let's go ahead and click that and grab the pool ladder and plop it down right there. I also like to add some pool lights so let's go all the way down to the basement and let's add some lights so something I like to do is just to do it in the middle of every single wall near the top you pretty much don't need more than that unless it's a super big pool and while we're down here let's go ahead and paint the wall so let's go ahead and go to the wallpapers and go to the tile and let's grab this cool as a cucumber and let's just leave it as this light blue this aqua right here and paint the wall on the inside and the out and let's do the same for the bottom so go to the floor tiles let's go to the tile and let's go to cool as a cucumber marble and do the same for the floor now that we added our pool let's go ahead and add some trees so i'm going to copy the cypress tree and put it in the corner right here and i'm also going to put one in the corner over here kind of right here where the chimney is kind of breaks up that chimney area a little bit now that i'm over here i see that it's really blank so let's copy this high hedge and let's just place it all the way across the edge of the fence all right guys now that the whole exterior lot is lined with the bushes let's go ahead and do the same thing we did in the front on the side over here and add a bush and the same right here now let's go ahead and add some bushes so grab the yellow flowers and let's put a couple right here as well as one of these palm plants it's a little bit blank over here so let's grab another hawthorn tree and just plop it in the corner over here now that gives us a little bit more dimension in the backyard all of these trees is definitely personal preference if this is too many trees for you you don't have to add as many trees and let's grab the yellow flowers and do the same around this tree as we did in the front now that those are added as you can see i pushed it back just a tiny bit just to make the side of the yard look a little bit better and let's go ahead and grab the little vines again and just do the same thing we did in the front, outlining each of the flowers. All right, guys, now that we have all of our landscaping out of the way, let's go ahead and go to the terrain paint tools and let's grab just this basic scratchy and patches. And let's go ahead and adjust the softness all the way down and go over one time. And let's go up to this smaller circle right here and let's go ahead and just click until we like the way that the terrain looks and i'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the yard and i'll see you guys after that all right guys now let's go ahead and go to the stone and the pavement and click this cobbled together we're going to make a little bit of a sidewalk heading to the back so something i like to do is to make it pretty curvy so let's go ahead and curve it around here and let's curve it through here and curve it in the front it gives us a little bit of a realistic pavement, like sidewalk sort of thing. And let's do the same thing in the back and lead it directly to the sidewalk. And so it leaves us over here. Let's go ahead and make this area a little bit of a section where we can put some lounging chairs and a little bit of a table. So let's go back to the wall tool area and let's grab this circular flat round right here and plop it down anywhere. What we're trying to do is make it as small as we can so go ahead and make it as small as you can and then grab it and put it in the corner right here and then flip it around and do the same thing on this other side right here and then you can just drag it over and now grab the cushiony concrete and paste it over the whole thing now this gives us a little bit more of an area that we can add some lounge chairs to so let's go ahead and do that now let's just grab these good old grilled cheese ones 
why not? And then hold down the alt and the shift key and get it exactly how you want it and press it. Don't let go of the alt key, but you can let go of the shift key and go ahead and plop it down right there next to it. Something else I like to do is get this end table right here and click the gray swatch so it matches the chairs. Hold down the alt key, make it even with the chairs and plop it down. And I like to get a little bit of a light and put it out here. Now let's grab this three senses oil lamp right here and just plop it down right there on top of the table. So let's go ahead and grab this backyard oasis umbrella table and choose the yellow color and plop it down right there. And let's go ahead and grab some chairs. And for this build, I'm gonna grab just this basic blue one right here and plop it on all four sides. And let's go ahead and grab it and flip it over so that each of the chairs is on a corner like this. So I also want to add a grill, so let's go ahead and do that in the corner. And let's just put it to the side like this and leave it just like this. And it's a little blank right here, so let's go ahead and add like a bench right here or something. This bench looks nice, plus it matches the yellow flowers and it matches the yellow umbrella we have that we plopped down over here. And let's go ahead and add a little bit of a plot right next to it, just to fill up that space a little bit. Now let's go over here and let's add a little area for some kids to play. So we're gonna grab the monkey bars and just plop it right there and let's go back to the terrain paint and grab our same scratchy and patches and, and let's go ahead and outline the outside of this area right here. Okay, now we are going to do the exact same thing over on the monkey bars. Something I like to do to make it look realistic is just to basically make it look like kids have been playing there and kind of highlight the areas that they would run to and then grab this green with envy and kind of highlight the same area. It's almost like dying grass. At least that's what I'm going for. <laughs> and let's go ahead and do the same with the smarter soil. And same with the smarter soil, go down all the way and let's color in each of the pegs. Just like that, it looks like a realistic area that a kid had been playing in. Now let's go ahead and add some details to the front and the back porches. So all I'm going to do is add some chairs out here in the front. So let's grab these outdoor seats and let's do the same grilled cheese swatch that we did in the back for the lounge chairs out here in the front. And I like to just place it kind of in front of the windows and have them facing each other. And then we can grab this outdoor end table right here and put it right there in between the two. Let's grab this same oil lamp we put in the back and put it right here in the front in between these chairs. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the porch in the back. And let's go ahead and grab this half-hearted hospitality mat in the yellow color and place it right here on the front door and do the same thing in the back. The last thing we're going to do out here, um, oh, I noticed that we forgot to add a chimney. So let's go to the chimneys and go ahead and grab just this basic large bricked chimney right here and grab the yellow, the red color and go down. And in this case, it actually fits perfectly. So we are just gonna plop it just like that. Now that we're pretty much done with the entire outside, let's go ahead and change it to nighttime and let's add some outdoor lights. My favorite to use is this Colonial outdoor lamp right here. Sometimes I like to put it over each of the windows, but in this case, we're not gonna do that. We're just going to put it on each side of the front door right here. And we'll do the same thing in the back. Something else I like to do is outline each of the landscaping areas with some of these outdoor lamps. So let's go ahead and grab the Moth Be Gone outdoor lamp and let's just add it to each of the exterior areas on the landscaping. Okay, now that we have the lights, look at how much better it looks at night. Now that we have the exterior of the build done, I am not going to go into detail on floor plans, but I'm just going to do a floor plan really quick and show you how I would design the floor plan. All right guys, so I have the floor plan built and this is basically how I would design the floor plan. So we have a little walk-in area right here and this leads to the living room. And then there's a hallway that leads to two bedrooms and a bathroom. Here is a huge kitchen and a dining room. You can always adjust this to make the dining room bigger and the kitchen smaller if you'd like. And then upstairs is a little hallway and three bedrooms and two bathrooms. So in total, this is a five bedroom, three bathroom house, which is quite a big house. And yeah, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you guys learned something from this video. And if you did, then definitely subscribe to my channel and leave a like so I know to make more tutorials in the future. So I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.
Losing time, I'm fading fast. I just wanna make it last. Try to let go of the past. I close my eyes and embrace the